بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستهديه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وصحابه وسلم تسليما كثيرا مزيدا إلى يوم الدين أما بعد This is our ninth class on the Siyam chapter of Zad al-Mustaqna. And yesterday we began on the conditions of uh, one who fasts. And we said, لِكُلِّ مُسْلِمٍ مُكَلَّفٍ The first condition we took yesterday was Muslim. Today, the second condition is مُكَلَّف. لِكُلِّ مُسْلِمٍ مُكَلَّف. Meaning, someone accountable. مُكَلَّف or accountability in fiqh means, as we went over already, it contains two aspects. Number one, that the person is sane, aqil or aqil. And number two, that he is over the age of puberty, bulugh or balif. This exempts one who's insane and children who are under the age of puberty from the obligation of fasting. A minor under the, uh, under the age of puberty is fully exempted by the overwhelming majority of ulama. In fact, it's near ijma' consensus that he is exempted until he reaches the age of puberty. Hadith, رُفِعَ الْقَلَمُ عَنْ ثَلَاثِ وَذَكَرَ مِنْهُمُ الصَّبِي حَتَّى يَحْتَلَمْ وَفِي رِوَايَ حَتَّى يَكْبُرْ وَفِي رِوَايَ حَتَّى يَبْلُغْ The pen has been lifted from three. One of them, insane, until he comes back to senses, and a sleeper until he wakes up, and a minor until he reaches the age of puberty. That hadith in uh, Sunan Abu Dawood is an authority on this matter. The signs of puberty are... Uh, three, for a male and four for a female. One that they both share is reaching the age of 15. Or number two, the growing of uh, pubic hair. Or number three, a wet dream. And a female has an additional sign, which is the start of her menstrual cycle. Now, keep in mind, the rule that a minor is not accountable for fasting does not mean it's not accepted or rewarded if he does it. It's not wajib on him. He's not held accountable for it, but he may get reward just as the parents may get reward if they teach him and if he does it. There's a difference between today's condition on fasting and the one we took yesterday. We took Islam, which the opposite is kufr. One who's a kafir is different in that fasting is not accepted from him. Here, it's not wajib on him. He's not held accountable for fasting. But if he does it, he may get reward. While as a kafir, he does not get reward. Another important point to know about minors is that children under the age of puberty are considered two categories. One of two categories is a matter of usul. Minors who are able to distinguish and minors who are not able to distinguish. What's the age or the line where uh, minors are referred to or classified as those who are able to distinguish and those who are not able to distinguish. In Arab, it's called mumayyiz wa ghair mumayyiz. Tufil mumayyiz wa ghair mumayyiz. It's disputed among the ulama. Some ulama said, uh, the first opinion is that they should be quizzed and tested. That's how we know if they are mumayyizin or not. Because children mature at different ages and it's better to quiz them and ask them than to go by age. Some said, uh, 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 if you ask them the difference between a donkey and a mule, if they know the difference, uh, that, and they specified that particular question, they said they're considered mumayyizin. If they don't know the difference, they're not considered mumayyizin. A third opinion said that we go by the age of seven for tamiz. Because uh, it's in the hadith where the Messenger وسلم, ordered the parents to order their children to perform salah at the age of seven. That's probably strong because it's uh, taken from a hadith. Now, having said that, what's based on that matter? Whether a child, a minor, is mumayyas, he can distinguish or he can't distinguish. What's based on that for our purposes today? If a child is under the age of seven, under what constitutes tamiz, meaning he is under the age where he distinguishes, then his salah is classified in, from a fiqh perspective as vain. There's not, not reward in it. Don't get me wrong. You encourage your children to make salah. But we're talking from a fiqh perspective. Do they get reward in ajr? My father tells me when I was crawling, 
I used to drag a prayer carpet next to him, pile it up next to him, and join him in his salah. May Allah grant him a long life uh, full of deeds. And then Firdaus, my father took us to Medina when we were at the age of seven, when he went to study. We were around the age of seven. And I remember for a fact that uh, we fasted at least two years prior to that, full Ramadan. So it's encouraged for parents to teach their kids, but there's no reward for children under the age of Tamiz, as that Fuqaha said. Now over the age of Tamiz, the Salah and fasting, he gets reward for it. Why? Because for a Ibadah to be a Ibadah, you must have knowledge of the Ibadah, and knowledge follows intention. So you have to have knowledge and intention. You need knowledge and intention. Does one who crawls have the intention and knowledge so that it may constitute a Ibadah? Someone under the age of Tamiz, he can't comprehend that. While someone over the age of Tamiz, although he may not have a full comprehensive knowledge of the Salah, like an adult, he will have the general understandings of the basic and essentials of Salah, and he will definitely know the intention. That's the difference. Another issue, whether one is under the age of Tamiz or over, they're not held, as long as they're minors, they're not held accountable until they reach the age of puberty. That's by the overwhelming majority of the ulama, including a large group of the Hanabila. There's another opinion by the Hanabila that he's held accountable. They said if a person, a minor, reaches the age of Tamiz, even though he's under the age of puberty, meaning to them it's age seven, these, he's age seven, and he, he's able to fast, he must fast. That's a weak opinion. Their proof on that is comparing fasting at the age of seven to Salah at the age of seven. They did Qiyas. Uh, and the response to that is, uh, first of all, looking into the hadith of the order of the Messenger وسلم, it was the, for the parents, ordering the parents to order the kids. That's for, it wasn't for the kids, it was the parents to order the kids at the age of seven. This, uh, uh, the second issue is the Messenger said, order them to do salah at the age of seven and hit them at the age of ten. Uh, do an analogy of siyam and salah is disputed because fasting is much more difficult than salah. In order to do qiyas, they have to be very similar. So fasting is much more difficult than salah. So you can do qiyas on it. And also it's different in that salah, when one leaves salah, he's a kafir. While leaving siyam, <coughs> as long as one does not deny, uh, deny it, he's not a kafir. And then the clearest, most direct proof on this matter is the hadith. The pen has been lifted from three, and one of them is a minor until he reaches the age of puberty. Uh, that really, the hadith doesn't leave uh, room for that Hanbali opinion that a minor over the age of Tamiz, which is seven, is obligated to fast. Yes, it's preferable to teach them, to raise them from as early as you can on salah and siyam, as young as possible. Sahaba used to raise their children on that, and they used to, when their children would get hungry, uh, to get them to forget that they will either take them to the masjid and buy them toys to get their minds off food. And uh, as my father tells me, he says teaching the children at that young age is like tying a knot that will never get loose. The point is one should be flexible with them, especially in fasting because it's difficult, more difficult than salah. Uh, one fact is that it's not wajib on them and that is an incorrect opinion in the Hanbali madhab. Now, moving on to the next condition of fasting, which is being sane. That's the next condition. Is that in your book? It's not in your book. You won't see that in your book. Where do we get that from? We said that mukallaf means that one, he's over the age of puberty, and we just finished that. And number two, that he's sane. So a majnoon, someone who's insane, mentally ill, is like a child, and that they're both not held accountable. One who's insane, regardless of whether that is a temporary insanity or a permanent one, he is exempted from the accountability of fasting. For one temporarily insane, it's only during the times that he is insane in them. There is many forms of insanity. 
The exemption is for those who are insane and it includes a variety of types of insanity. For example, Alzheimer's is one. Those in a coma are considered like those insane. Uh, uh, those who uh, lo lost their mind within their life, those who were born like that, those are a variety of insanity that they're exempted. One insane is like a minor in that they are not obligated to fast. Now, uh, there's an issue. In one, one of two opinions by Imam Ahmed, that's unusual, he states that an insane person makes up his fast. When we say one of two opinions, it means that he has two opinions on this matter. The followers of his madhab try to explain this, respond or explain in this issue. And they try to do it through two ways. Some of them said this is a weak opinion that could not and should not be attributed to Imam Ahmad because why did they say that? They said it clearly goes against the hadith Rufi al qalamu an thalath and among them is an al majnoon hatta yafiq. The pen has been lifted from three and one of them is one who's insane until he returns uh, to his sanity. Just like we don't tell a child to make up your fast for the past 15 years or 13 years or 14 years while you were under the age of puberty, we don't tell someone who's insane make up your fast while you were insane. That's why it's a weak opinion and it conflicts with the direct wording of the hadith. The one in Sunan Abi Dawood, that's an authority on this matter. Other followers, another way they went at it, another, other followers of the Hanbali Madhab said, no, making up the fast for the insane, according to Imam Ahmad, was meant for those who are in a temporary insanity. There's permanent insanity, then there's temporary insanity. Comes and goes, sometimes for a few weeks, for months. For years, sometimes within the day, they'll be insane part of the day, insane at part of the day. They said what Imam Ahmed meant is that if a person goes insane for an hour of the day and he's cured within that day, that's what Imam Ahmed rahimahullah meant. They tried to, tried to justify the opinion of Imam Ahmed rahimahullah by saying it, it, they, he means temporary insanity. Meaning if he's cured within that particular day. Uh, this issue is actually very similar to one who is in a coma. One who is in a coma and he wakes up in between two salahs. If someone insane returned to his normal status or one who is in coma wakes up between two salahs. During their coma or insanity, they're not uh, held accountable. Now if he wakes up after dhuhr, does he have to make that dhuhr? Is he held accountable for that Lord? Or he says, okay, next salah, I'll start on that next salah. If he wakes up or his mind returns to him between the salah, before the end of the timing of a salah, which an average person can make wudu in salah, then that's when he must start and that's when his first salah begins and he's held accountable to it. Let me give you an example to clear that up. If he wakes up one minute before, uh, Dhuhr is over, or three minutes before Dhuhr is over, meaning he wakes up three minutes before Asr, because that's when it's over. He's not required to make Dhuhr. He's not account held accountable for that, because that, that one to three minutes is not enough for an average person to make wudu and salah. If he wakes up or his mind returns to him 10 to 15 minutes before Asr, then he has to make Dhuhr, because an average person is able to make wudu and salah within 10 to 15 minutes. So, so far we took the condition of Islam, which was yesterday. Today we took mukallaf, which means over the age of puberty, and it means sane. The next one that the author mentions is qadirin. He says qadirin. This is something nearly all the ulama agree on. The ability to fast. You have to be able to fast. Islam orders those who are able to do that which they are able. Islam does not have any orders that are impossible or one can't endure. That's why when one cannot endure fasting for, for example, for an illness, he doesn't have to fast. Islam does not order something that's impossible. لا يكلف الله نفسا إلا وسعها Allah burdens not a person beyond his scope. 
فَاتَّقُوا اللَّهَ مَا اسْتَطَعْتُمْ Keep your duty to Allah and fear Him as much as you can. مَا اسْتَطَعْتُمْ As much as you can. Do as much as you can. And the, the Messenger صلى الله عليه وسلم said, إِذَا أَمَرْتُكُمْ بِأَمْرٍ فَأْتُوا مِنْهُ مَا اسْتَطَعْتُمْ When I command you, do the best of your ability and capacity. If one is not able to fast, we say it's not wajib on him. He's not able to fast, it's not wajib on him. What falls under this is one who's traveling. Some, you know, like who are traveling. Some who are ill. And some who are old. Or some who have uh, incurable uh, disease. There is a difference between one who's ill, uh, if he has, for example, a cold or a flu or his leg is broken and he needs pain medication, uh, and that falls under uh, whoever's ill or is on a journey, uh, the same number of days which he did not fast, he did not observe his fast, he has to make them up if he breaks his fast. One who is permanently unable to fast or is very old or with a permanent disease or an illness, he does fidya, expiation for every single day. We will talk about those issues in much more detail. The uh, author has statements pertaining to those matters that we'll go over. That's why I'm not going to discuss them now in detail. We mentioned now so far yesterday, Muslim. Today we said mukallaf in A above the age of puberty, B, sane, then the third one is qadirin, which is ability. Uh, there's a fourth one, which is, the author didn't mention it here, because it's actually included in his other statements, which is being a resident, not a traveler. Uh, one who's traveling has the option to break his fast by ijma' of the ulama, and it's in, clear in the verse. وَمَنْ كَانَ مَرِيضًا أَوْ عَلَى سَفَرٍ فَعِدَّةٌ مِنْ أَيَّامٍ أُخَرٍ Whoever's ill or is on a journey, the same number of days that he did not observe his fasting, he has to make them up. Some ulama went to the extent, to the radical extent, of saying one is not permitted to fast on a journey because that resembles fasting before the proper timing. And fasting before the proper timing is not accepted. Like someone saying, I want to do uh, Ramadan two months ago. You can't do that. They took the verse to mean his fast is delayed. The timing of his fast is delayed until he returns. That's actually an extreme and a wrong and a weak opinion. Uh, the Messenger وسلم, fasted during his journeys. And so did some of the Sahaba. And those who fasted did not flaw those who didn't. And those who did not fast did not flaw those who fasted. In Sahih al-Bukhari, uh, Amr al-Aslami asked the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa I'm going to travel during Ramadan. The Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa said, if you wish to fast, fast. If you wish to break your fast, then break it. The point for now, we have a lot more details to discuss on that issue, inshallah. But for now, for this uh, to coincide with what we're covering now, uh, uh, is that one who is traveling is not obligated to fast. It's his choice. However, uh, he must make it up. Uh, and just like an ill person has to make it up unless it's an incurable illness. A fifth condition of fasting that's special for women, and that is uh, that she be pure from her menstrual cycle or the postnatal bleeding. And it's by ijma that fasting of a woman who's on her menstrual cycle or the postnatal bleeding is not accepted and that she needs to make it up. Those are the five conditions that uh, one must have to have an accepted fast. Islam, taklif, which is uh, sanity and over the age of puberty, ability, a resident, you not be traveling, and a woman uh, who's not on her menstrual cycle or her postnatal bleeding. There are details, again, I'm going to repeat, there are details on some of those issues that I didn't mention because the author has future statements on them. So it best coincides with uh, the explanation that we do it then. Let's stop here. We have some time for questions.